Well, hey there, Aletheia Church. I uh, just want to spend a, a few minutes recapping my sermon from this past Sunday uh, on 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that I had entitled Authority and Honor. And one of the things I mentioned at the beginning of that sermon was that there would be probably a few things in this sermon that were going to be uh, maybe hot button or hot topic issues uh, culturally, uh, but that we need to that we need to allow the Word of God to kind of be our guide and our um, source um, as we kind of process through these things. So uh, one of the first things we see as we're looking at this passage when we get to chapter two is you kind of see Paul open things up and he just basically says like, hey, I appreciate you guys reaching out to me. I appreciate you guys writing to me. Um, remember what I had taught you. Thank you for doing that. And, and but, but don't forget the why. And what was going on is that they were writing Paul and, and Paul's letter to them was in response to a number of questions they had and through um, things that he had heard for, in, in regards to like testimony of what was going on in this church. And so apparently they had written to him um, regarding this issue of wearing head coverings inside the church, both for men and for women. And his response to them in, in verses two, excuse me, in verses two through you know, basically like verse four is, hey, you guys are doing what I kind of showed you but maybe you seem to have forgotten the theology of why. And the theology of, of why is, is, is centered there in verse 3. And he says that there's kind of this implication of a, of a hierarchy or an order of submitting to authority that God had created both in the created order but also existed inside of the Trinity. And, and the first one was this, is that Jesus is the head of man, meaning that, 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 that men kind of fall under the authority of Christ and are to live for him. And, and, and Paul mentions this in Ephesians chapter 5 as well in regards to husbands. And then he says that man is the, the head of his wife. Uh, this also is reiterated in Ephesians chapter 5. And then he says that God the Father is the head of Jesus. And so what Paul's kind of trying to, to, to get us to see is that inside the Trinity there is there is... Um, equality, uh, there is uh, power, there is uniqueness and individuality, but there is also in that interdependence a, a functional or willing submission uh, that they hold to one another. And that in the same way inside of the church, inside of the family, inside these institutions that God has created and ordained, there is supposed to be a, a, a functional submission. And then he gets to the practical side of what that submission or showing honor looks like in the corporate worship gathering. Remember, what, what's being addressed here is how to show honor both to God and to one another inside the corporate worship gathering. And so he asks the men not to wear head coverings because this would have been uh, a disgrace to God because this is something that, that the pagans did in worship of their gods. Then he moves on to women. And he says that women are to wear a head covering because it was culturally appropriate for them to display that they were married. That this display that they were married and it was a sign of kind of honor or respect to their husbands. And so then he goes on to say that man is the image and glory of God and that women are the glory of man. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time getting into that right now. We, we unpack that on Sunday, but I hope that you guys in group will discuss this and kind of discuss the implications of this and what we're looking at. But ultimately, Paul kind of wrapped this up as saying, hey, the way that men honor God is living in light of his precepts and of his commands and seeking to honor him and, and love and serve uh, those around them the way that Christ did. And that brings honor to the name of God. And that women in, in, in the creation order Right, are helpers to men, and they come alongside and they glorify man, but in that they glorify God in their own being and in their own existence by doing this as well. And that the Son brought glory to the Father, and that all of this is meant to make much of God. And that we don't do this solely, we don't do this independently, but we do this interdependently, working together to make much of Jesus. And this is complicated, this is not popular, especially as Westerners where we are extremely independent, this is, this is tough, and it's going to be difficult for us to kind of process through this, but I hope that you'll honestly kind of work through this together. Maybe uh, if God would unveil uh, a need for repentance to you, that you would see that, and all of this would lead to a greater worship of Jesus and greater fellowship uh, with one another, and that we would build one another up in Christ. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Have a great week. Go and be the church.